one little click or click. Wow, I really can't speak today. And <laughs> ta-da, we are in the Zoom call recording. And this is going to be uh, on YouTube one day in a week. <laughs> and, and hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in because are you kidding me? We're already running out of time? We just got in. You sure? Potentially. <laughs> yeah, this is a very fun thing to use. Jesus. Okay, let's get back on topic. I'm joined with Mark and Colin. They are both from, if I can grab it, Aquila. Did I say it right? Yep, you got it. Perfect. Aquila, which is based <laughs> in... Where is it based in now? <laughs> Mark, I'll well, let you field that one. <laughs> so I live in Kitchener. Two of our members live in uh, the Hamilton area. And then we have two members in uh, Calgary and BC. So we're, we just call ourselves like we're from like Ontario, basically. So we started Windsor. Uh, <laughs> so that's basically like our... Our hometown is, is Windsor, uh, Ontario. And then the uh, majority of the members are from uh, Hamilton, I guess. And then, yeah, we've been all over the place. So, yeah, it's, it's uh, kind of weird, I guess. <laughs> it's a little I know. different. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't sound weird to me. <laughs> okay, so where does that make Colin from? I I'm in Calgary. Oh, okay. Yeah, and we've got another guy about uh, three hours uh, west of here in a little town in BC called Invermere. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, we well we're joined with Lee vocalist. Yep. And the bassist who lives in Calgary. Yes. Let's get started, gentlemen. This year, you're releasing not only this beautiful EP, uh, if I can speak, if I can properly say this correctly, Valley Mortal Mortatus. Pardon? It's a um, um, uh, Mortatus. 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 Yeah. It's like uh, Valley of the Dead. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Well, this EP is coming out this year, and another one is due out this year, too. The Jewels of the Emperor's Crown. Yeah. And I can see that this al this EP right here is on Bandcamp, but hasn't yet made its way to Spotify. When might we be able to start streaming it through that service? Uh, you, you should you should be able to uh, by now. Um, you should be able to, to stream that album valley through uh through uh, spotify and through uh youtube uh and everything so you should be able to do all that with that out now so oh yeah you oh. should be good okay because i'm on the spotify page and yeah. only the first dp is coming up Va valley's on there no valley isn't on there just imperium imperium okay uh you might have to like search it i guess um we used the uh, cd baby and i guess they're they kind of mix things up uh, so okay or yeah so you might have to like type in the full word to find uh to find that ep on there okay well <laughs> we'll worry about that later let's get back to the main focus on promoting aquila now when can we expect Jewel of the Emperor's Crown to come out? That's coming out on Bandcamp on uh, the 1st. So uh, was that uh, Wednesday? So this this Wednesday, it, it comes out. That's the so, most Canadian thing ever. Coming yeah. out on Canada Day. Canada oh, yeah. Day. And then it's also uh, Julius Caesar's uh, month as well. So oh. Got, Canadian band le releasing it on Canada Day, and it's also Julius Caesar's month, so why not? That's 
Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is just brilliant timing. And I'm assuming it was intentional. Yeah, it was our it was our uh, drummer's uh, idea. So, so why not? So everything just lined up perfectly to to release it on that day. So awesome. Now, in 2009, you released your, I guess, the debut EP or album. My bad, <laughs> debut album. And 11 years later, you released two new EPs into the world. New one coming on Canada Day. Why did it take so long between, I guess, album to EP? Well, I think after we got done um, like touring and stuff, uh, and then we tried to settle down um, around uh, 2012. I guess we started to like settle down a bit, um, and then uh, so we started our writing process around that time for the new album, and then like uh, members left, uh, so we had to find like new, new members. Um, so the writing, writing process kind of took a little while on who we wanted in and who who couldn't do it anymore. So that's a, uh, some time. And then, uh, so we had some songs written uh, and, and like they were recorded and stuff. But then uh, eventually I left around 2014, like I left, uh, they had another vocalist. Things didn't work out, I guess. With that and then um i came back earlier like i was talking with the guys and eventually i came back uh around december and then we talked about re releasing these songs uh and everything else so and here we are so so they were recorded we had we, we still have a bunch of music uh like songs that uh, that we're going to be working on to because we were we finally like agreed to do a whole new album now. So, so it, it all takes time. Cause like we all got, got married. All, majority of us got married, uh, finding work, um, you know, kids house and all that other stuff. So to find time for like the band and stuff like that took, took some time. And then I think we're all, all of us now are all in a good place. And, uh, the way that the internet works and we've been, pretty much known for like an internet band like anyways because like majority of our writing process has been like that mm -hmm. so, like even since like uh, our first album it was all sending emails like back and forth uh in between songs and getting demos done so we we, can't, we, we kind of figured that uh for all of us to work together that uh everybody kind of learn how to record like at home like have their own like mini studio at home so and uh yeah so that's the, the way that we're we're going hopefully um uh, you know when this pandemic is over we could like agree on doing like a few shows like uh, here and there nothing like nothing too crazy that we did before maybe a couple a couple shows a year like four or five or something like that mm -hmm. something something that we could all like handle right so so that, like, that's the plan. So, but when it comes to doing the shows, is it going to be the three Ontario gentlemen move go out west to do the shows, or is it going to be the two west out west gentlemen come to Ontario to perform? We'll, we'll probably head out east. Um, the western faction will probably return to our home base. Um, I think it's, it's, a, it's, a little, it's a little more feasible that way for everybody. And uh, better be back. Okay, that's good. Um, yeah, we don't have a huge presence here out west, so we might as well stay where at least some people know us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, when it comes to writing this full length, what's what for you two is the most difficult part? Writing the songs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd, uh, I'd say I'd say the distance, honestly not being able to connect in person. Okay. Now with this whole COVID Corona quarantine, all this fun stuff happening, a lot of bands and musicians now have been doing like little quarantine music videos of their own of songs just for fun little things to do. Could we see Aquila do that? 
Yeah, we're uh, we're planning on doing that. We're just we're just, everybody just getting gear, and then uh, we're also like um, picking what song that we want to do and stuff like that. So we we've been talking about it uh, more and more. So actually, we had our first. I we apologize here, mainly me, because Zoom ended our meeting very very briefly yeah that wasn't very and, nice yeah no <laughs> like zoom i thought you were good not not so much no not so much <laughs> but, it's okay but, thank you okay let's get back to what's 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 important right now yeah talking about aquila and did you get to finish your answer about the music video? Yeah, we're we're just discussing on which music video to do, like for oh, okay. a play. so that's so that is in the works. So okay, perfect. Now, what makes what is really what goes into deciding which one of your songs gets made into the music video? Oh, we just like make a vote. We all agree to it. It's pretty simple. Yeah, there's no like internet fights or anything. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all we're all pretty laid back. It's uh, it's, it's not too tough to to reach a consensus. Well, that, that is perfect. Now, when it comes to the fact that you are now transitioning to being mainly an internet band. Do is there frequently group calls amongst all the band members just so everyone is on the same page about stuff? Well, we use our uh, Facebook Messenger. Um, we have a group there that we kind of like communicate through and send our stuff through. So that's pretty much been our our go to, uh, I guess, app to use. So. Um, I guess McGuire calls like Shell Center once in a while, um, just just like things like that. But, but basically, we just use the uh, Facebook uh, Messenger to get our uh, communication through through uh, everybody. So perfect. Now, <laughs> for each of the individual, what with having members so distantly. From so distant from each other, what is the hardest thing about that? I guess it's just the like communication at times and not being able, like, I guess to practice together, right? So mm -hmm. to keep that chemistry going. So it, just like little things like that, you know, it 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 does hurt, you know, but we we just uh, make do. So yeah, I agree. Um, Traveling for, uh, you know, getting together and playing shows that that certainly creates a bit of a stipulation. But um, given the fact that our eastern and western factions are relatively close together, we can we can still get together even if it's uh, a, a fractured group. Perfect. Now, when it came to creating these two new EPs one that is out now, one that is out soon. What for you, for each of you individually was your main intent when creating them? I think, I think for one, I think our main um, focus was like to put music out there. They kind of like let people know that uh, kind of like we're back and like we're still alive, uh, that we're going to do something. Uh, you know, so, so this is just, uh, I guess the introduction that, that we're kind of like back together and we're, uh, going to be creating some, some music. So, so that's like basically what these two EPs are, uh, representing, I guess. Yeah, definitely a revival. Um, I joined, uh, Aquila when this, this album was in its pre-production stages so 
I've got to see it through various incarnations, and it's great to, uh, to finally be putting it out uh, in, a, in, a, in an official context. It's, uh, it's really satisfying to see and have the guys all back together. Awesome. Now, during the recording process, during everything, until it's finally out there into the world, your child is out there for everyone to see and listen to, what behind the scene part was the most difficult? Uh, it could have been, uh, I guess, just getting, I guess the last, uh, well, Jewel, just getting that like, kind of like mixed and mastered, I guess, uh, just finding to see who was available. Uh, well, we had John Howard, um, Paul Hamilton there. He, uh, he uh, mixed and mastered the, the album for us. So uh, luckily, well, I'm lucky for him because he was supposed to go on tour like in Europe um, during the whole uh, COVID-19 uh, thing. So we kind of like locked out. So he, he was able to mix and master during the month of April, right? Mm -hmm. So if we went on tour, um, that probably would have, the, the, like the album wouldn't, uh, wouldn't even be coming out now. We probably it probably would have been coming out like in September or something like that, like after he was done his tour. So we locked out that way. So that, that kind of like um, hurried the process of, of of doing this EP. So and and like I think it kept everybody kind of like sane, like you know what I mean. Like it, it had us like looking forward to something. Like we we were happy uh, a little bit more, I guess, with with all the terrible things happening right now. So I think this just gave us a little bit of uh, just happiness, I guess, when you know getting this uh, EP done and, and getting um, the graphics done and, and everything else. So so that kept uh, kept our uh, kept our sanity uh, in check. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it like, sure did. It's yeah. it's nice to be getting that out, especially amongst this whole thing. Yeah, now, because of this whole thing, it's given a lot of people more time on their hands to maybe discover something new that they never really kn knew that they were good at. Yeah, I think I'm saying that I'm phrasing this right. Um, so for each of you individually, have you picked up any new hobbies or little tricks that you didn't do, do or know before the quarantine happened? Um, not really. I'm like, I'm, I'm working like crazy. I think I work like my hours at work. I've been pretty, pretty steady or a little bit more since like the whole, uh, this whole pandemic thing. Um, so I've been pretty busy like that way. Um, I've just been getting new like recording gear. Um, just trying to get my, a better setup at home and, uh, just trying to, I guess, perfect that right now. So just learning how to do that better. That's like my main focus, like band wise. Mm. Yeah. Same boat here. Um, home recording, um, production at home so we can get some demos out for, for some new tracks coming up. Um, I think we're all working pretty, pretty diligently towards that so we can be self-sufficient, um, especially with the distance between all of us. Awesome. Now, from the Windsor scene, you have that unique ability where you you had not only the Ontario part, but the Michigan part also because of how close Detroit is to Windsor, I believe. Yeah, Detroit? Yeah. My, my geography is right? Yes? No, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So when it came to that, were there a lot of times where Akula had the opportunity to go down to Detroit to perform a couple shows. Yeah. We, uh, we, we never, we never tried, uh, honestly, just because like the hassle that they give uh, bands go, go, going across. So uh, we never, we never tried with like my old, like, I guess like back in the day, like, like with my old band and stuff like that, we played Detroit a couple times and it was pretty easy. And then, like the whole like nine eleven thing, and 
they have like just different rules now and and, mm -hmm. and everything. So so at that time, like uh, we just we just never never tried, and then uh, we we eventually got really busy, like in playing in Ontario and stuff like that, like every weekend. So so we we're just pretty much focused on around around this southern western um, area until we went on tour and stuff like that right so mm -hmm. awesome now when this is all over and shows are back hopefully back in person <coughs> <laughs> back in yeah. person for people to enjoy and just have a good time and aquila does decide it's time to do a perform a live performance where would be one of the first cities you would want to perform at Oh, it'll be Windsor, for sure. Yeah, it'll be Windsor. Windsor, Windsor would be the first place. I'd say our next home base would be Hamilton. That's, yeah, uh, we usually throw on a good show there. So <laughs> perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Kit uh, Kitchener will uh, will be third. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Have you yet experienced the? the heaviness of the Kitchener metal scene? Um, just, just online. Um, uh, listen to a few bands that, that are from around here and stuff like that. I, I talked mm -hmm. to a couple of them uh, here and there and stuff like that. Just, just, just getting to know uh, a few, a few people around here. So I actually grew up in the Kitchener metal scene. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. I, I played in two different groups. Uh, throughout uh, the late uh, 2000s into the early 2010s. And uh, yeah, it, it used to be thriving. I'm not sure what it's like anymore, but uh, I it's, would love to go back and play. It's doing very well. It's really good to hear. I can tell you that much. Uh, could Would you mind telling me what bands you were in? Oh, if, gladly. Yeah. Yeah, I was, uh, it was originally in a group called Broken Enemy. Um, okay. we, we were around for a little bit. Uh, circa 2008 to 2010 and then uh after i left broken enemy i was with a group called the city divided um, it was a cool little metalcore group that uh changed changed paths they they went pop punk and uh it was sad but that's okay that's okay <laughs> no there the, i am i i can proudly tell you Kitchener is doing very well for itself with a lot of amazing thrash and death metal bands. Right on. <laughs> no. Now I'm just thinking, Jesus, Colin. Not you, Colin, me, Colin. Oh, jeez, okay. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> I, can't, I can't think for you, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. You know, I thought call, us Collins had a special connection just because of the name, but. <laughs> we got a good 3,000 kilometers between us, so I might have something to do with it, too. Fair, <laughs> Fair enough. No. Well, okay. Colin, have you immersed yourself into the Calgary scene at all since being in Calgary? I have, yeah. it's um, Metal's not quite as affluent out here in the West. Um, it's not as well accepted. But there are some great, uh, great groups in the area. I've been fortunate enough to see and uh, know some people in. Um, Big James Arsenian, from, formerly of Endast, is actually living out here in Calgary, and uh, he's got a great local group called uh, Stab Twist Pull. Love to give those guys a little shout out. Um, they're holding it down, keeping it real here in Calgary. Um, but yeah, between the big shows um, that come through, there's there's not a ton in the local scene that I've been able to find, unfortunately. Uh, yeah. Now, for each of you individually, how important is it to be part of the local metal scene? Oh, you have to be uh, involved. That, that, uh, that's the only way that it works with us uh, small bands. Like, like you, you got to have a, a scene here. You got you, you to gotta be involved, um, you know. Uh, that that's everybody like that like that's the only way that you're gonna create a scene and that's the only way like certain bands are gonna be heard right so so um <clears throat> yeah I, I try to stay involved as, as, as much as I can 
uh, you know, it's, it's a little bit harder now, but, uh, you know, back in the day, I used to like do shows, uh, put on shows myself, um, try to stay as involved as, uh, as uh, possible. So. Yeah. Showing up for other bands and even if you're not on the bill, just going out and showing your support, being an active member in the community is, uh, is vital to, to anybody's survival in the scene. Mm -hmm. Now, because of the Windsor scene, are there any other like unsung Windsor heroes that Aquila would like to talk about right now? Uh, in Windsor right now, um, he's out there right now. I'm just trying to think at the moment. Um, Yeah, I'm just drawing a blank right now. Uh, I just I got something here. Give me one sec. <laughs> uh, there's uh, there's a territory, um, which like um, a buddy of mine uh, played guitar for me like when I was in the Goliath. Uh, so he plays guitar in that band now. Um, so uh, territories is pretty. It's more more of a hardcore uh, type type style band. <clears throat> um. There's like a lot of bands that are um, there's um, that I used to play in a band with uh, with Bloodshot Eye and stuff. So there's uh, the Shane's band, which is uh, Downright Dirty. They're more of a thrash, hardcore type type band as well. Um, there's uh, a band that used to be called um, uh, Apex, but they changed the name to uh, Thrush Lung now, so that's more of a, a math core type type of band. So, so there's a few bands out there that we were like to, to play with and stuff. Uh, I think another band that came back came back together, uh, the Dead's Elite. They're they're like a hardcore type of band, and they they got back together. They used to play with us um, back in the day as well. So. So um, there's a lot of uh, hardcore bands like uh, in Windsor. There's there's a few like metal thrash bands as well. Uh, Windsor's been mostly known as a a hardcore scene, I guess, since like since I've been going to shows. So so there's a lot of bands that have that type of style. And as Colin is searching over the computer. <laughs> Uh, I found her here. Uh, Weapon of Choice. A couple of uh, Aquila band family that have uh, reignited yeah. reignited their flame. I know they started uh, making some tunes and playing shows uh, at the end of last year. I guess that would have been cut off with, uh, with COVID. But uh, yeah, there are definitely some Aquila family that are, are still holding metal true in, in Windsor for sure. Excellent. Now... If you were now, if someone was to ask, "What is Aquila?" What would be your answer to that? Oh, we're just a metal. We're just a metal band. Like we're just, you know, if you if you like some groove, you like some, uh, you like the headbang, or you know, that's the type of metal that we like to play. Um, yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing really like special about us. We're just, we're just a metal fans that like to play metal music, so. Yeah, I'd agree with that. And, um, having joined the band post initial conception, um, I, I found Aquila to be very much a family of musicians. Um, we all care about the music, we care about each other, and uh, we like rocking out, so. Awesome, now, I know this is a very much a ha Hail Ma Mary kind of question to ask but what is aquila's five-year plan hopefully that we can play some shows and then uh, the, the biggest the biggest thing right now is uh, is is writing and and have like have an album out, out soon and and hopefully we could uh, play a few shows and promote that that album so that's like that's probably like our plan for the next while so that's like the whole the whole plan there for the next probably five years, yeah. Yeah, we we, we clearly don't move with any great speed, so uh, <laughs> yeah. 
uh, getting uh, getting some quality stuff written, um, sending the files amongst each other so we can start formulating demos and uh, get working on a third full length here. Awesome. Now, well, gentlemen, we're at the time of the interview where I asked this very important question. And hopefully, I have faith. I have faith that you two are going to get it right. You seem like you would know the answer. So here we go. The question is very simple. Who would win in a fight? Lemmy or God? Oh, <laughs> Lemmy all day. <laughs> I thought I thought I thought Lemmy was God. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Uh. Yes, I knew it. My gut instinct was right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Colin Park, thank you so much for taking time out of your extremely high demanding and important <laughs> schedules to come and do this interview with me today. Is there Anything else you would like to say to the people that are going to be watching this on YouTube? Yeah, I mean, just uh, support support your local scene. Um, you know, stay tuned for uh, Akilah's new EP. Uh, let us know what you think, you know, and uh, stay metal. And we have a bass player. Yeah, that's and... That's and <laughs> The guy, the guy below me is our new bass. Is uh, is our bass player? Or <laughs> bassists are important too. Yes. yes. <laughs> Depends on who you're asking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Okay. Well, thank right you, on. gentlemen, so much. And remember, everyone, Jewel of the Emperor's Crown is due out this Canada Day, July 1st, so make sure to go get it on Bandcamp. Until next time, everyone, keep on thrashing. Cheers.